So in this video, I'm going to explain the uh, design of fluidized bed reactor. So first of all, we need to find uh, this minimum fluidization velocity. That is an important parameter. Uh, like uh, if we are given, if we are giving the velocity less than this velocity to the gaseous stream, then uh, there won't be any fluidization uh, in the bed, and the bed will remain fixed. So let me first explain to you the different parameters involved in this equation number one so this is a particle diameter density of the solid density of gas uh, gravitational constant uh, minimum void fraction uh, sphericity viscosity so we have taken the parameters for uh, solid uh, which is involved uh, in the bed particle diameter is 0.5 mm, void fraction is 0.4, sphericity is 0.9. So substituting these values in equation number one, we can find uh, the minimum fluidization velocity that comes out to be 0.077 meter per second. Now we need to find uh, the uh, height uh, or minimum fluidization height uh, using this equation, equation number two. So here we have uh, actual fluidization velocity uh, this minimum fluidization velocity, density of the solid, density uh, particle diameter. So we can take uh, this ratio as 1.3. So after that we can find the fluidization velocity required for uh, the expanded height. So we just need to solve this equation. Uh, we can we can do it either uh, using the Excel solver function or we can just rearrange it to get the value of uf. So after solving, we obtain the value as uf, this as 0 0.2186. Now we can uh, take the velocity as uh, four times the minimum fluidization velocity. Uh, so which comes out to be 0 0.3087, uh, which is slightly higher than the fluidization velocity. So now we need to find uh, these two parameters to characterize uh, whether uh, the reactor is operating under the fluidization region or not. So we need to substitute these uh, values like UF we just determined and uh, the other parameters we uh, uh, just have. So substituting these values we obtain U steric as 0 0.08814 meter per second and uh, D steric as 7.062. So then we just need to go to this figure to find out the region uh, where uh, the reactor is operating. Okay. so. Next, we need to find the slugging velocity uh, that is uh, calculated uh, based on the minimum fluidization velocity and uh, uh, reactor diameter that is initially taken as 3.5 meter. So, just substituting these values, we obtain the uh, slugging uh, velocity as for, uh, 0.487 meter per second. Now, maximum bed height can be determined uh, based on the uh, diameter of the reactor. Uh, using this equation we just need to substitute these values so we obtain the uh, bed height as 1.18 meter so now let's move towards the height of the bed at uh, slugging test sets so that is given by zs is equal to 60 into d uh, power 0 0.175 so substituting these values we obtain 74.7 uh, feet and uh, we just uh, convert it into meters that comes out to be 22.77 meters then we need to find the terminal velocity because uh, uh, particles will be settling uh, under terminal velocity uh, where gravitational forces and buoyancy forces are balanced so we just need to substitute these values here to find the terminal velocity that comes out to be 4.95 meter per second so now we have uh, a distribution plate that is at the bottom of the uh, fluidized bed uh, so how much the pressure drop is there uh, in the distribution plate that is basically 30 percent of the uh, total bed pressure drop so now we need to find the pressure bed drop uh, pressure drop in the bed so for that we have this equation uh, so here we have density of the solids and, uh, height of the bed, minimum uh, voltage fraction, uh, gravitational constant. So substituting these values, we obtain the pressure of, of the bed as 15.22 uh, kilopascal. So now we can determine the uh, 
distribution plate pressure drop so it comes out to be 4.57 kilo kilopascal now we can find the orifice velocity uh, like a distribution plate has a different uh, orifices a number of uh, holes in it so how much uh, is the velocity uh, through the orifice so we can discharge coefficient of the orifice we know that it is around about 0.59 2.61 so we can take it as 0 0.6 so just substituting these values we obtain the orifice uh, velocity as 124.65 meter per second so orifice diameter is uh, taken as uh, three times the particle diameter so we know that uh, particle diameter is uh, 0.5 mm so we can determine the uh, diameter of the orifice so now uh, how many orifices uh, will be there in uh, per square meter of the distribution plate so we have this formula like uh, we have uh, diameter of orifice fluidization velocity and uh, velocity through the orifice so we can substitute these values to obtain uh, the number of holes as uh, number of orifices as 993 per meter square so this value uh, is less than uh, 1000 uh, which is uh, feasible uh, because otherwise it will become too expensive so now uh, for a triangular pitch uh, we can use this formula so from that we obtain it as 0 0.0341 so now for uh, lower uh, limit checking uh, we need to use this formula so substituting these values we obtain uh, the limit as 0 0.0237 so which is uh, less than 0 0.0341 so now for upper limit uh, p should be less than uh, this value that is obtained by substituting these values so once we substitute these values uh, it comes out to be 1.5 so we know that p value is less than 1.5 so it shows that um, both of the checks are well uh, justified now coming towards the costing uh, we have uh, this uh, purchase cost at the ambient conditions uh, these k1 k2 and k3 are empirical constants uh, we can take it as uh, for a process vessel uh, because um, then uh, we will be placing the uh, solid material inside it uh, a is the uh, sizing parameter which is uh, volume so volume uh, we just uh, determined from the design so substituting these values we can uh, just obtain the purchase cost at the ambient conditions now uh, pressure conditions are normal so we can take uh, fp factor as one so for material restriction it is taken as stainless steel so for that uh, we know that fm is uh, 3.2 we can take all of these uh, parameters from the costing uh, by the book of Triton. So we now have uh, these uh, uh, B1 and B2. So using these uh, values, we can obtain uh, the bare module cost. So finally, uh, for total module cost, uh, it can be taken as 18% uh, higher than bare module cost. So uh, CBM can be multiplied with 1.18 so but uh, be careful that uh, this value is for uh, 2001 uh, because all of these um, factors are for uh, 2001 so we need to convert uh, this value from 2001 to current year uh, that is uh, 2023 okay so that's all